right, in this episode, we talk about the first thing I look at in a pitching analysis. And we break down Dylan's mechanics. And I hit 91. <laughs> Poor CEO Stephen Godani here and Scott. <laughs> What's your last Suter. name? Suter. Suter, yeah. I knew Scott. I was about to say Suter. <laughs> I'm not gonna bend here for Th That guy's <laughs> here. He's the gym fly <laughs> floating around here. Making gains though. Hey guys. Broke 90 for the first time. Yeah, I broke 90 this week, so that was that was good. Pretty excited, but didn't get it on video. Oh, I'm sorry. So it's not legit yet. Gotta get it on video. All right, so the at top velocity hashtag pitch tip show. We're gonna Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. Uh, at top last say hashtag pitch tips hashtag baseball tips ask your question and we answer on the show and um, I don't know nothing's really going on all of our pro guys left actually we got we got a pro guy on the way to uh, Florida once to stop by and maybe we'll get him on the show tomorrow so be heads up for that um, but a uh, baseball starting spring training's off Who's fun Wait, watching these guys? Sorry, I'm not gonna give out the name. Ah, uh, I think I have an idea. Of it's, it's not a. It's yeah, not a. No. Yeah. It's not a, someone who's training here, but big fan of the approach, and uh, hopefully we'll get them on the show. So, what's the question for today? Cheeky asks: First thing your eye is drawn to when evaluating a pitcher for the first time. First thing my eye is drawn to when I, when I look at pitcher. I, I I don't know why. It's probably. I don't know when it started happening, but like I look right at the feet. I look right at the legs. I don't really notice what the arm's doing until afterwards. So my biggest focus is on lower half. Like how well, you know, it's more than likely too, just back leg. Like how well does he load and come off the back leg? Because it's just so big to propelling you forward, putting momentum behind your body and then launching, eventually launching your upper body. So it, it'd be like the pole vaulter, right? <clears throat> It's like if we don't have a good back leg, it'd be like the pole vaulter not running and just trying to stick the pole in the ground and get it to go, right? Same thing, I'm trying to hit front foot, torque, and then unload. If I don't have any momentum, which is all in that back leg, then it just makes it really hard. And it makes me have to overcompensate and you know, really put a lot on the arm. And you know, being a guy who was a rotator cuff victim, rotator cuff tear, um, learned not to put a lot of stress in the arm after that, because I couldn't, so I learned. I learned moment, momentum. I learned the lower half, and <coughs> so that's what I look on. I go, I, I go right to it. People look, people after we've been looking at video, they're like, "What did you see? Is hip to shoulder separation?" I was like, "No, I haven't looked yet." I'm like, I always look feet, grant legs, hips up. Good stuff. What do you the look thing for? I look at when I like watch the other guys throw in here is I, I like I, one of our biggest problems with. A lot of guys, it's like we don't get enough separation, so I look at hip to shoulder separation first because, especially for the more powerful guys that I know are strong enough to get drop, like to drive down the mound, I, I really just like I want to see them get better hip to shoulder separation. So that's the main thing I look at. Anything left you? for you? Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I'm just going to reiterate everybody else, but yeah, I, I look at three things I look at back leg drive, hip to shoulder separation, and then front leg stabilization. You better step up so oh, I don't sorry. cut you off in that watermark. Oh, well, it's so fine. same it's thing. Fine so happens, yeah. Back leg drive, hip to shoulder separation, front leg stabilization. Those are my three jigaboos. Three, three keys. Jigaboos. <laughs> Velocity right there. All right. Next question. Borgs asks, hey Brent, is it okay to see my video and see how my velocity can improve? Dylan, uh, looking at your video now, I'll put it up right here. So you're just falling, you know, Tom Seaver did this though, but you're just falling into your front leg. So you're collapsing. So you're loading to the back leg and then you just continue to rotate and collapse into it. So you hit your front foot and it's flex, but there's no linear push. There's no linear momentum that's gonna push you over that front leg. So you, I mean, there's, well, there is a little bit, but not a, a significant amount. So you fall and collapse into the front leg and then you can kind of finish your trunk forward, but there's no projection, there's no catapulting of the trunk because uh, you're, you're not peaking forces. High velocity pitchers tip, tend to, most high velocity pitchers have good back legs, tend to peak forces, peak forces pretty well. You know, someone like Chapman can go 120% of his height into his front foot and do that faster than 
most any guy in, in Major League Baseball. So, but at the same time, too, Chapman, I see, is using less of his back leg, more than likely because he's, he's lifting and he's getting so big and explosive, I don't think he needs as much of that lower body power anymore. I think uh, he's just a better athlete now that he's, he's getting bigger, stronger, faster. So, um, but if, if you're a guy who just, you know, is 85 and you're doing the best you can with your athleticism, then you just gotta, you've gotta get more momentum in the front leg and that just is gonna help. I mean, just look at Chapman in Cuba. I mean, he was just flying off the mound, back leg driver. What um, you see? The biggest thing that I see is that you're standing up like really tall. You need to, when you first lift, I, I think you should, you need to sit into your back leg. Like you're just, like he said, you're, it, you're, you're on your back leg and then you just kind of fall down the mound. Instead of sitting down the mound, gathering all that, like moment, all the weight, all that force, everything, all your power, gathering it and then loading exploding it. out of it, loading just into that back leg, actually sitting, not just But make guiding. sure it's forward and down. So we don't want the hips just to go down. So yeah. still keep moving forward, but, but load sit. better. Yeah, like load, load like almost yeah. like riding your back leg down yeah. the mountain right. and then exploding out of it. Good. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I would just, are you good? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I would just say, um, to me, when I look at it, it's just you're just it moving just so slow. So that's that's where it'll come back to mass times acceleration. Like from the mass perspective, like I don't know how much you weigh or how tall you are and stuff, um, uh, but you don't look particularly that big. But just the acceleration factor is you're not powering yourself down the mountain. That's what Brent's talking about. You're not and, and Scott, you're not loading into the drive leg, accelerating yourself down the mound, and then. Uh, uh, since you're not doing that, you're not getting great uh, hip to shoulder separation, letting everything load back, and then um, uh, hitting front foot strike. It's it's uh, you have a, a decent front leg where it's like stabilizing and you're going over, but it's not a stabilization and extension back into the uh, body to launch the trunk forward, which we see a lot of high velocity pitchers do, and in studies sh uh, showing uh, stabilization and extension back. Well, yeah. Plus, it's a lot easier to get that front leg stabilization when you don't have any back leg drive. So, I mean, it, like you'll <coughs> notice once you actually do sit into your back leg and drive down the mountain that your front leg is probably weaker than you think and that it will be harder to get over it. Yep. Need more power. Same time, too, it's like I like to measure the angle of momentum. Your angle of momentum is really down below your front leg. So when your hips are hitting your front leg, it probably has to redirect back over your hip. That's why, you know, Scott was saying, load as you move forward to really then that accelerates you through your front leg so then you you you're able to move your trunk over your front leg but what you'd see is a guy whose hips are moving more that angle moment momentum are going more into the front leg that when the front leg hips hits the hips are more easily than catapulting or abducted up to catapult over if the momentum's already kind of going into that front leg as opposed to straight down before that front leg so uh, that's why it's, I mean, even where you are, if you had a crazy front leg and you could slam it back, I think it would make you like almost jump up. But that's just my opinion. All right, that was good. If you have a question, go to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat at Top Velocity, hashtag pitch tips, hashtag basal tips, ask your questions. 3X Velocity Camps, 2X Camps will be coming up this summer. Hurry up and uh, book for those. Uh, I've already talked about uh, the price increase. I'm going to raise the price for the camps. So I would book them now. I'm saying that so you guys can go out and book them now and lock it in the price it is now. And we'll see you on the next episode. Yeah. Holla, holla. Holla. We them boys. Holla. We them boys.